local legend has it that Mr. Big Robert, as he was affectionately called, was operating a city street grader when he unearthed a box full of money and or gold and Confederate money. Rather than keep the treasure for himself, he turned it into authorities. And impressed by Robert McCurdy's honesty, the city of Nacogdoches awarded him lifelong employment, which he maintained for about 50 years. He was already an anomaly in the 1950s and 60s, as African American men here were usually only hired for sanitation work. His strong work ethic and integrity had won respect from city leaders and many people in the community. He was also known for his cafe, the Green Lantern, in the Bodark neighborhood. Shortly after he passed away in 1988, the city council approved naming the city park on Bowdoin Road after him. It had already been a much loved park for 25 years, and following that, Robert McCrimmon Park continued to, to be so for the next 30. Um, so I would like to give a few minutes to Kenneth Farr. I'm going to tell you even more later in the program of why he's significant to us. But he has been here in Nacogdoches since 1965, had a good long career here, NIPCO, is that correct? NIPCO. And so he has had a lot of um, interest in the community and has had a lot of influence as a mentor for young men, especially those who don't have fathers as they're raising, uh, growing up. So he's going to share with us some of his thoughts about these community gathering places that we have in our parks and how that helps to strengthen our communities. Excuse my attire. I can't pull my cap off because my hair goes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> more like a whirlwind than I'd already do. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, as far as uh, what I would call here today, I first want to thank all of the Nacogdoches businesses and individuals for the support that you all have given us in the black community. For all the things you've done to enhance our abilities to address and take care of our young people. I personally want to thank you for that. And I want to ask that what they are seeking, that you will be generous and continue to help to sponsor things that are great in bringing our community together. And I have been a mentor for approximately 50 years in Nacogdoches. And with all the support I've gotten from everybody here in Nacogdoches County, I personally want to thank you for it and ask you all, those of you who have not already been able to do that, to please support this effort and continue to support our community that we may be able to help our kids to grow up to be responsible adults. The, the things that we experience now with crime, uh, drug addiction, uh, with the, the, the racism, all of these things that are negative, I want to ask you all to continue to support efforts so that we can come together, that we can be the community greater than the community we are. I'm from Kirbyville, Texas, a little small town down uh, south of Jackson. And I was raised up without the things that we are going through today. I don't know if you all know Rusty Sanders. He's from Kirbyville, Texas. And I used to play with his, uh, uh, I used to be at his mother's and grandmother's store. And I would be able to play with them. And we had a community that was unified. And that's what I like about Nacogdoches. I came here in 1965 and I experienced together like I had when I was at home. And I want to thank you all. I want to thank Nacogdoches, Nacogdoches County, for being such beautiful people with such generous and kind and big hearts. And I want to ask you all for this PALS uh, program that we have in McCrimmon Park, 
I used to take kids over there, and we go over there, or some of us are us, would go over there and try to pick up basketball. Uh, the Concerned Black Men have had a, uh, uh, we had a Juneteenth festivity over there for the community. It's a fine place, and with the improvements, it can be better. We can do more and more in our community, and hopefully we can continue to help to raise our kids where they will be responsible and not have to be criminal, not have to be uh, uh, running the streets and doing things that, that are negative and that are, are not productive to our community. I want to thank you all for the support you've given and ask you to continue to give that support. Thank you very much. Wow, well, I was inspired by that. <laughs> um, so I am so excited to tell you about this project because I love seeing spaces transformed into community places where our kids can get together, where we can enjoy um, building our community and enjoy our beautiful weather. Well, nine months of beautiful weather because <laughs> we know <laughs> we only go to parks with water in the summer. <laughs> so the McCrimmon is a neighborhood park that is desperate for improvement. Um, over the years, uh, pieces have been taken out. Um, there's no more slide, there's no merry-go-round, there's no seesaw. Um, and this park is 60 years old. That's kind of old for uh, equipment, right? Um, playground design and equipment have had fast improvements over the last 60 years. Um, they have amazing play spaces now. Um, our kids need better equipment and to do that, we have to raise money. Our update to McCrum Park on Road and Road will be at least $200,000, which sounds like a really big number, right? Um, it could be a little bit more, um, but installation of equipment is expensive. Um, it has to be professionally done. It has to be hurricane proof because we get high winds here. Um, so there's, there's a lot to invest. Um, but we don't expect our community to, to raise that full amount. Um, there are grants for community improvement, for playground improvement, and um, to do that though, we have to show that our community has a vested interest in this space to add to it, to create a better space. And um, so a space that Imaginations can run wild where muscles can be built, where friends can be made. And to do that, we as a community need to raise about $60,000, which seems like a lot. But the city has told us that they will match these funds. So with that $60,000, that's $120,000 from our community. And we are certain that we can find grants that will give us the rest, right? Um, this project will include Another fence for the basketball court. If you haven't ever been to Wooden Road, there's actually a great basketball court. It's covered and it did not have a fence around it. And the city recently added a fence to protect <laughs> balls from going into the road, which was really important. But also important is there's a very steep hill <laughs> that goes down <laughs> to the woods behind the basketball court. And when you shoot and you miss, it goes all the way down that hill. So we are going to get a fence for that to stop it from going down the hill and you know interrupting basketball play. Um, the city has also uh, designated funds already to paint the court. Um, it's very slippery. It's a very slick concrete. And they are going to add traction and a design that will inspire the kids who play there, um, which we're so excited to see. Um, so if you look at your handouts, everybody's got one on your table. Um, kids' imaginations are great, but the only equipment that's left at Woden Road Playground is a swing set and that climbing structure that you see. There used to be more equipment, but it has deteriorated over the years and had to be taken out for safety purposes. 
And as great as kids' imaginations are, <laughs> it's kind of easy to get bored fast with just one metal thing to climb in the hot sun. So on top of the playground structure, we're also hoping for benches that are closer to the playground, picnic tables, and shade structures, both over the picnic tables and possibly over the park. Um, I joked about not going to parks without water in the, in the summer. <laughs> the truth is, we choose shady parks in the summer, right? And a lot of kids are out of school in the summer and they need places to play and shade to rest in. And there are trees around that park. Um, there is the basketball court. That's nice. There's lots of things going on, hopefully, when the, the court is done. There will be people playing there. So um, a shade structure for the playground would be amazing. And um, just a little story, when we added shade structures and picnic tables to the Temple Park um, project in our first project, um, there is a organization that gives out lunches to kids at various parks around the city. And they have very low participation at that park. And they told us within a few weeks of us finishing that project, the first few weeks of summer, that over 25 kids were participating and getting lunches that they hadn't gotten in the, before. Um, so that was an amazing um, story to hear that kids are eating in the summer now <laughs> when, when they eat it. So um, infrastructure matters. Our, our neighborhood parks need this improvement. And so our project has actually already started. PAL is invested. We've got around $10,000 to give to our total of $60,000. The 700 family has given some. Some were, was specifically donated for the Winkerman project. And the rest comes from PAL donations that were not designated specifically for the splash pad or the splash pad bathroom um, and that weren't needed for the completion of those projects. So to tell you more about our kickoff event, um, Michelle is going to come up and finish and tell you how you can participate in the raising of the $60,000. All right, thank you so much. So as we started this project, could you, could you give us a, some uh, landmarks? We're about on Woden Road. Okay, so Woden Road, let's see. If, you, if you're coming from the loop on the southeast side of town, Woden Road, there's a gas station. And when you come in Woden Road, it's, I don't know, a quarter of a mile probably. It's not far. So, but it is in the middle of the neighborhood. There are lots of homes around. There are um, housing developments so kids could easily walk there. And actually something I didn't know, there was a trail that came through the woods from Carpenter Elementary School. And so that's how the school groups would come down through the woods with their sack lunches ready to play. And they'd get a whole day of recess and it was the best day of the year for them. <laughs> So, you know, as we've been doing this and hearing the memories of individuals who were growing up in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, we're hearing this common theme of how much this park meant to them. They've got wonderful memories of playing softball, playing with their friends, um, playing basketball, as we heard. So, all of this culminates into an invitation, as you've been hearing. We invite you to, to join Cal's efforts to update this city park, increase its accessibility, and appeal and build upon its history as an important gathering place. In memory of Mr. Big Robert, we are dedicating our September 4th fundraiser, which is a basketball tournament called PALS Community Heroes Hoops Tournament. That's not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> to him and to other unsung African-American heroes here in Akadoches. And so we put out a call for <coughs> nominations. We received 25 submissions. And one of those submissions was for Mr. Farr. So he is actually one of our community heroes. So thank you. Oh. So there's you know different people who were submitting, you know, their coaches, their teachers, their um, a judge, or uh, just different people from around the community, pastors. It's just been beautiful to see these tributes that have been uh, expressed in gratitude for the, um, the significance that these people had on their lives at a, at a tender moment, at, at, you know, a special part of their lives when they're growing up and they're trying to figure out who they are. And they've had those adults to, to make that difference. Um, so at our tournament before the championship game, we will honor all 25 um, 
of our heroes, whether they're present or not, some are past. So we'll have family members uh, receiving something in honor of their family member. Um, and, so, and actually 10 of the heroes have been chosen as the team names. And so as the teams have been signing up, this is a community tournament, anyone 18 or, old or older can sign up, put a team together, and we've got seven of the 10 so far, we've got three more to fill, but they've all been selecting from this list of heroes and making their team name off of that. And their team name goes on the jersey, their player name goes on the jersey, their numbers, they got to pick their colors. Um, except for these last three, we had to go ahead and order. So they won't have their player name, but they can be their hero. Um, so that'll be from 11 to 4 in Festival Park, and we'll have DJ, we'll have music and fun, bounce houses, food trucks, we'll have a big raffle prize, table, people can uh, try to win some really wonderful things. We'll have kids basketball drills that they can sign up to do between the games. It's going to be a really fun day. Oh, and also the first responders free throw shootout between the police and the fire department. That's going to be fun at 1 30. <laughs> I thought, you know, let's just milk this little rivalry a little bit. So, but then we'll also have SFA men's and women's basketball teams there mm -hmm. as a meet and greet, and they'll help run some of the drills with the kids and interact with fans. They can promote their season. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're so excited to have their participation. So it's going to be a great day. Um, we hope that you'll be able to attend and be a part of this it's because it is historical. We're excited to see the, the memories that people have that they can now create new ones. Um, so legends, you think about Mr. Big Robert, his legend and the legacy that he has. I didn't know anything about him until we started working on this project. And it just made me think that perhaps it can be said that what is shared decades later after the person <coughs> has passed has a lot more weight about that person and what they've done and their impact than what was shared at the funeral and those special tributes that they give. But now, 30 years later, someone who didn't grow up here but has a great appreciation now for him and others, and I've been really grateful to learn more about the heritage here in Nacogdoches and been inspired by it. So, thank you so much for your time, for your attention. Um, if you do have specific questions, we're happy to take them. And there are a couple of needs left for this tournament, getting sponsorships, because we're a nonprofit. We're always asking for sponsorships. But we do have one more bounce house to cover, and then um, the referees, we'd like to have real, real referees and have them there to officiate the games. And so that's, I think those are the last two sponsorships that we're trying to wrap up in the next week, hopefully. <laughs> so, any questions? Is Gary going to be a point guard? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's safety and up. We didn't count the age on Do y'all have a time frame? So if you're doing <coughs> fundraising now, what's the projected time frame? So as is um, our experience, it usually takes a year or more to gain the full funding. So for Temple Park, that took us two years, but then for the splash pad, that was six months. So you never know. So I think the more that we can create awareness and get people aware of what we're doing, it goes faster. So we're hoping, I, and I'm, I'm being realistic, it will probably be at least a year before we see uh, more of the things being installed. But I think two years is when I'm hoping that we're completely done. <laughs> okay. So, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much.